quick shout out to my amazing sponsors for the Patriot Barbie podcast. Celtic Plastics is a water filtration system for your home and work that clears bacteria, fluoride, and heavy metals from your drinking water. You can buy one on CelticPlastics.com and use my code PatriotBarbie for 10% off. And one last shout out to Red Balloon. Thousands of companies are pushing back on wokeness in the workplace. Find a freedom-loving, non-woke job at redballoon.work and follow them on Instagram at redballoonwork. For all my sponsor info, book, and merch, go to patriotbarbie.com. Like, subscribe, and share this podcast. Now, let's get into today's episode. Welcome to the Patriot Barbie podcast. I'm your host, Lindsey Graham, author and conservative activist. I love Jesus, I love America. I'm a proud wife, mom of three, and I'm having bold and witty conversations with America's patriots. The ones that cancel culture desperately want a blacklist. Trust me, I've been there. In 2020, I defied government lockdowns in Oregon, reopened my salon, and became an icon of freedom. I've been targeted by government and raging liberals every day since, and I refuse to back down. Patriots, I'm here to tell you, your values are worth fighting for. The Patriot Barbie podcast starts now. Welcome to the Patriot Barbie podcast. You guys want to break the mold today. We've got a special guest. He's not a politician. He's not a founder of like a nonprofit, nothing like that. Just a cool dude. He's a rapper. He's a first form athlete. He is the actor from Empire. He's an investor, the CEO of Star Power Films. <laughs> He's loving his whole bio right now. Mario Cannon. What's yeah. <laughs> What's up? I love the intro. We need a fake like clap track. Yo, the intro was, you just kept going. I was waiting for you to say some more stuff. Like, I'm like. He could fly. Ex- boss extraordinaire. Uh, he has his own lotion coming out. Wearer of Michael Jordans. Let's go. Walker from the West End. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how that happened. It was, I know how it happened. Okay, tell me. I had, I had, uh, I didn't have enough threes. Oh yeah, that's I right. I had three on three instead of three, three oh, three, three. Yeah, he ended up at the wrong place. So, so that was we, a, this has like been a long-awaited podcast, like long. <laughs> oh, we're up in the wrong set today. My bad. All right, so you're here in Arizona because you're looking at properties. Is that right? Are you? Yeah. So I'm looking to relocate here. I've been I've been coming here for over a year, back and forth, okay. like sometimes multiple times in one month. And, How did uh, you end up visiting here, like um, friends? So I got I got booked out here with Bow Wow at the Golden Margarita to do like a guest appearance or whatever. Oh, cool. Um, so Don Miliano had booked me and. Um, the viral agents, and so I got booked, and that was my first time coming here, and it was incredible. Like mm-hmm. the energy was like contagious. Yeah. Like I, I love the weather and the people. Yeah, people here are very happy. It's like sunny all the time. There's yeah, nothing to not be happy about. So then I end up getting booked again for an, another show after that, and I, I end up just coming back all the time after that mm-hmm. because I had more business. I kept meeting more people and finding my purpose in, in the state of Arizona. Nice. So, yeah. Well, we're excited to have you. What do you get? Are you going to open a, a gym out here or anything like that? Yeah, you own an anytime fitness, don't you? Yeah. yeah. So the, that's the, the intention is to stay in the fitness realm because okay. that's that's where the that's where the soul's at for me, man. That's where that's where my my uh, transformation started was in the gym. Okay. So yeah. you are you're going to open a gym out here, aren't you? Damn right. Ah, can you uh-huh. make it like kind of in the middle of everything, not Scottsdale? Everything's in Scottsdale, and I live on the west side. Yeah, it, you know, yeah, not I to love, tell you what to do with your business. I love right Scottsdale, there. but it probably won't be in Scottsdale okay, though. Cool. Yes. All right. Keep me posted. I'll make a cameo. I got you. Okay. Um, all right. So, gosh, you've got like such a great story, and I actually think a lot of people don't know your story. I think once somebody makes it in the rap world or in the film world or as an entrepreneur, kind of where they came from gets lost, and like. I know who you are, like millions of people know who you are, but you started off in Illinois and yeah. you, you got in trouble when you were a teenager. I kind of want to hear that story. Yeah. So as a teenager, you know, uh, I was actually a really good student. Um, what happened was after I graduated, I kind of, you know, needed some, some male guidance and male leadership. So you know, I was the first one in my family, really, you know, right in my household that graduated high school. So it was weird. So I, I looked to the streets for, you know. For in about, Illinois. When I, when I hear Illinois, I hear like. Chicago. Okay. All right. I guess. I don't know why. Yes, Chicago. But I always feel like it's like Southern, like Baptist-y kind of people. But no, man. Is it's, that it's, not 
you know, it's crazy. Illinois is so different. And, like, you got the southern regions way different from the northern region, right? Okay. So you got, like, the farming community in central Illinois. But then you still got all these sub-cities around. Yeah. It's just a whole it's a, it's a whole different culture. So were you in Chicago? Um, not when I got in trouble. But I, I okay. spent a lot of time in Chicago. Um, me and my mom were in Chicago as a kid, like, when I was younger for a little bit. But I'm from Springfield, Illinois. So oh, okay. Originally. Gosh, it just seems so normal, like a normal life, Springfield, Illinois. No, you know? Springfield rough, man. Yeah. Uh, it's a, it can be a dangerous city, and it can be a lovely city, too, um, depending on where you're at. You know, so did around. you have – what what kind of family did you have when you were growing up? Brothers, sisters? Um, so growing up was just – really was me and my cousins, um, Reggie and Antone and Savante. I really – I didn't have any brothers and sisters at that time that I knew about. Okay. Um, later, you know, I would, I would learn that I do have brothers brothers and sisters. That's so cool. Um you know, after like kind of meeting meeting my dad and stuff, yeah. so that was kind of you know a different situation. So I grew up with my siblings were my my first cousins. Okay. Um, so and, yeah. You so, were gonna you were gonna join the military before you got in trouble? Yeah, I was okay. I was in the Air Force. Um, I got an ass bad test. I scored like an 85, 83 or eighty five, right around there. So okay. I was going in for the avionics apprenticeship, and so I was getting ready to go to basic. I got sworn in at MEPS. And so I was going to go off the basic. Yeah. So I called my recruiter and I told him, oh, man, could you move up my date? Because I don't think I'm going to be alive or I'm probably going to be in jail. Seriously? What were you doing? God, <laughs> give me the juicy stuff. Okay, don't give man. me like the like like incriminating stuff. No, nah, I'm Only not. things you've been convicted of. You know, I <laughs> <laughs> already served. Yo, I was, I was just in the streets, man. I wanted to make money and I wanted the people to, to love me, so... You know, you were people pleasing the wrong people. Yeah, so gangs, I'm, you know, drugs, all of that, all and stuff. and so I was living a double life. You know, I leave campus, and uh, on campus I was a good, you know, smiling guy, but mm-hmm. at night, you know, I put the gold teeth in. It's mm-hmm. a different, it's a different tisk, story. Tisk, tisk, so, um, you know, and the thing is, man, I just wanted people. I wanted I mean, when I look back at it now, I just wanted to be loved. Mm-hmm. I wanted people. I wanted to take care of my family. I wanted the people to see me as a hero or as a provider. Yeah. And um, I was going through a lot at that time, like heartbreak and just different things. And I wanted to feel, I wanted to feel love and want yeah. it. So I went into the streets. I looked up to the drug dealers. Interesting. And those were, you know, my basketball dreams were over, right? You go to college, you realize, you, you're not as good as you thought you were, you know. Were you, yeah, had you been like recruited into a college or, or anything? Or were you so, just looking? No, so I got recruited for a couple of JUCOs, like to play ball. Like uh, my coach got me scholarships, okay. but but I wanted to go to the, the University of Illinois in Springfield because I wanted to go to a D1 school. Yeah. And I had the academics for it, so I ended up getting a scholarship. I think I was like the only black freshman at the time, kid there, at the, on, in that program. They only let 100 freshmen in. And I was one of the ones nice. that got in. So it's called a Capital Scholars Program. Okay. And I, I was so smart. I was smart. I just wasn't smart. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, that's all right. Yeah, so you'll so get that. So when you say, um, I like to ask hard questions, so I hope you're ready because you're like, don't know what I'm, what I'm going to ask. When you say, um, oh, I just wanted to be loved, like where did that come from? Was your mom not loving? I don't know if you want to like blaster on podcast but no my mom was what, dope. what what kind of like culture were you in where you had to seek that kind of love well you know uh at, at that time you know I, I just went uh got my girlfriend just broke up with me at the time mm-hmm. i was sad about that um as i was weak how and, old were you uh, i was like 18 yeah when you're that young and someone dumps you it's like the wor- it's like devastating yeah because she was like my first and i was like you know in a, yeah. in a way that it happened was embarrassing too like you know, it was with one of my friends, you know, that I looked up to. And so, like, that crushed me. And, um, it made, you know, it kind of it kind of psychologically defeated me a little bit, too, yeah. right? Because you're young. You don't know. Yeah. And then um, after that, I just – I started drinking a lot. And mm-hmm. I started doing um, drugs, a lot of pills. I would take a lot of pills. I was drinking lean. Did you buy them off the street? Or did you, like, sneak, like, real, like, pharmaceutical pills from – I mean, I, you know, I had them wherever, wherever. I didn't sneak them. Where you could get them? They was, it was, they so was from scary. the street. Drink, yeah, drink, scary. Drink, drinking lean and stuff. Yeah. Uh, um, I remember, like, passing out at stoplights, like, and just getting saved by some one of my homies. Oh, my gosh. Um, you know, so I was going down this deep, deep depression, this deep spiral yeah. of this trying to feel love. I just wanted to be important, and I wanted to make it a rap, and um, that's I wanted to be somebody that, 
people loved. So mm-hmm. I said, if I have money, I could buy people stuff, and people right. people would like love me. me and come to my parties. Yeah, yeah, my my goal, honestly, man, when I was I like I gave up. My goal was like I wanted to get a car, get rims on it, and, <laughs> and, and get my gold teeth, and then have have girls like me. And oh my god! And that was it. I made it. That's what you probably I got a car, maybe some rims, but I don't see any gold teeth. No, I did have all that. You and did? I, yeah, I had all that shit. You did? Yes, I did. Okay, what, why? Why did you take the gold teeth off? Because uh, I had went to jail and I uh, lost them. I oh, kept, okay. I kept losing them. Did people beat you up and take your teeth? No, nobody. That's nasty. Okay, well, I'm like, how do you do, How do you take gold teeth? They were snatch. Uh, they were snatch outs. Oh. Ooh, you okay. snatch them out, but they so were. You're educating me so much right now. Yeah, it's a, <laughs> they weren't permanent. But they okay. Were, it was. It was. I was living in uh, back and forth out of state at the time in St. Louis. So in St. Louis, like back then, like gold teeth were like, you was okay. the, you got a gold teeth to, you know. You made it. You can get the ladies. Did ladies. you get the ladies with the gold teeth? Damn right I did. <laughs> <laughs> so, so when did you get, get out of all that? Like how'd you, how did you get out of all that? Well, you know, uh, um, after losing, I lost my sibling. So like, mm-hmm. so um, I had a lot of murder around me, right? So I, I, I lose, um, Tone was the first one to lose. And then, um, that really um, actually kind of made me regress a little bit. And then eventually, you know, I was scared for my life too because I wasn't living right. Mm-hmm. You know, I was living a double life still. And having my son really affected me. Uh, my son was born. And in fact, the day my son was born, I, I was fired from my job. So I got fired the day my son was born. Oh, so I'm like, back to the street, right? No. But I was like, oh. man. I, I can't do this. So that's when I started to try to re- rehabilitate myself. And really, I went to a program out of state. I lived in Illinois, so I, I, went, I, was, I went to Missouri. I wasn't supposed to travel to Missouri, but this is all old now. <laughs> and I had to go get help yeah. um, on how to, uh, you know, cope with, you know, dealing with that type of stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, and at that time, I was now, I'm a felon, right? Yeah. So I was a felon at that time. So I couldn't get any work or anything. So I went to this program. They taught me how to fill out applications, um, the right things to say, how to avoid checking that box. Mm -hmm. Because when you check that box, you're not going to get no job. They're not going to give you a chance. Mm -hmm. So once I got into the system, and this is crazy, but, hey, I'm putting this on blast. So now (laughs) uh, I I was working for – I ended up working for Nordstrom. Uh And I ended up being, like, one of the top sales reps. You didn't check the box or what? I, I got in. No. Did, you, did you check the box? No. Then, 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 so what? They didn't run a background check because they say they're going to, right? Yeah. You're with the felon box, right? Like if you're, yeah. if you have a felony. Yeah. You're like, <whistles> pass that one up. Pass it up. And then they didn't run a background check, there's, obviously. Yeah, there's sauce for that though. There's a reason why they didn't do that. Okay. But okay. I don't want to say it on the air Ow! because because the reason that's why is that's because that's it it could help uh, felons get jobs, man, and that's so. Right. And I don't want y'all, I don't want to give up the sauce because, you know, there's felons are some of the most hardest working people I've ever met, man. Some of the great, greatest people ever, man. Mm. And uh, I just feel like, you know, they all, we all need a, ch- a second chance yeah. and nobody's perfect. So was know. Nordstrom your second chance? Man, Nordstrom was my second chance. I was rocking suits and um, it was so, I was so fresh. I was a women's stylist, women's shoe. Oh uh, my salesman. gosh, no way. I was killing, I, I can style your outfit. It's, oh, I can't, like it's, that should be a whole podcast on its, it's own. It's easy. It's not. I would have brought a whole closet for you. I do it. I oh put it together. Pop, pop, now, put it I'm together. sure, so when you move here, we're going to do a whole thing. We're going to do the Mario Patriot Barbie collab and we're going to do the... I'm so sexy, you Let's know what it. I mean? And you do the, they all do the clips like in the movies and all the different outfits you put me in. No, Twister <laughs> told me that, man. Because, you know, every time we do shows, he's like, every time I walk, I was like, damn, what you got on now? You know, I'm always I'm always dressing up crazy. Oh, how fun, though. And then he, <laughs> he's like, man, you need to be a stylist. You need to be a stylist. He I called, can, I can I, use a stylist when you move here. Yo, I was in AZ when he called me. I was at Versace. And um, he, he's like, hey, man, what's up? I'm like, what's up, Twist? I got it. You need to be a stylist. <laughs> You're like, Rapper slash stylist. Hold on. I could have put that on my bio, right? Rapper, yeah. actor, first form athlete, stylist. No, oh, because wow. in the way in the way he talked, he talked, you know, he's so stylist. smooth. He said, you got to be a stylist. And you were like, no. I was like, <laughs> if I got time. As, in my free time as a hobby. Yeah, I just, I'm just so busy with music and, uh, and, oh, yeah. and fitness. I don't have, you know, time. But, That's right. No, but that, that turning point was... Was was when the first was a death of tone, and then um, um, it just it scared me, man. Yeah. Um, and the you know the the the, the fake tough 
mind you, that's that's not me, man. I just wanted to smile. I want to help people. Mm-hmm. You know, I want to see people get out of out, out of whatever's causing them to feel like they don't belong or deserve to live a better life. Because everybody, you know, needs to experience a better quality of life. Because right. it's, it's out there. Yeah. But you got to just want it, man. And you got to know that it's out there, though. If you don't know, I didn't know. Right. I never. If it I would all started with Nordstrom. Yeah, and coming out here, look like. I wouldn't, we wouldn't be here talking if I didn't take that chance of coming out here. Right, right. I wouldn't even be on the show. So what happened after Nordstrom? Like, I mean, how did you go from I style ladies at Nordstrom to rapper, actor, empire, CEO? I mean, I'm sure that's a whole story. Yeah. But like. So my PO started to get suspicious. Uh. <laughs> I was using my grandma's address uh-huh. in Springfield. Okay. So... He started getting suspicious about me never being there. Uh-huh. I was in Missouri. So he started threatening me. Like, Uh-oh. I'm going to, I was like, man, I'm working. I told him I was just, I was a fashion designer working at a fashion place. I was. I didn't tell him where. Right. But I didn't want to tell this mother humper that, dog, I can't get a job in Illinois anyway. Like, you know, it, it, they're not going to hire me. Yeah. I have to leave the state, bro. Yeah. Like, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm trying to provide. You for did the wrong son. thing for the right reasons. There you go. Yeah. How you going? You going to possibly rehabilitate me? I'm on probation. You making it fucking hard for me. Yeah. You know what I mean? So um, no. So he was man. He was getting super dusty with it. So I had to. He's doing his job, whatever. Mm-hmm. But he's still making it hard for me. So I was like, man. And I know there's probably a way I could have probably got a transfer or something. I don't know, but I don't think I was transferable because of. The murders around me and this, this my, the situation with my name being, you know, maybe aggressively, maybe high profile at the time. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Uh, they probably wouldn't have let me do a right. transfer. I didn't even want to ask them. Yeah. You don't want to put yourself on the radar. No. Yeah. Yeah. So I ended up, I found, so I got back, I got my buddy that worked at AT&T. So I was able to leave Nordstrom because I had to, to go back to the county to finish out my probation. Mm-hmm. So that's what I ended up doing. I ended up moving to Lincoln working for AT&T. And um, keep in mind, I, I was used to having money at Nordstrom and, and you living a double life. So when I moved back, I still had that mentality of, uh, like, you know how you, if you in the street hustling, making money, you used to get money quick. Right. So once I moved back, I, I went completely clean. Man, I, I, felt, I, got, I went broke. I fell off. Oh, no. So I went super broke, like to the point where, like, um, I'm staying in an efficiency apartment. I can't barely afford that. And like, I'm still putting out music by the way, whole time. Mm. And I'm sleeping on the floor. People don't even know, man. All I got is clothes. I ain't got no furniture. Right? And the whole point was like provide for your son, but now you're back to like, Hey, I can't provide for my family. I fell off. Cause I'm now I'm like, cause I'm trying to, you know, finish this damn probation off and mm-hmm. stuff. And I got, how long did you have probation for? Um, they kept like continuing it, man. Like, like every time I was supposed to get off, they're like, add more time to Why? it. Why? Because, you know, <laughs> it's always something. It would, I mean, you weren't doing anything to earn, like, additional probation? You know, not purposely. Okay. Like, you know, I was just trying to survive. Right. So every time I drop a music video or something, like, somebody would call in and tell on me. Like, I had a, I had a music video I dropped, and they said I, I had real guns, and I was um, smoking weed or whatever. So I got. Probation added. Yeah, they called, they called me, and they drug test me, and sent me back to court. And the, and the judge was like, I'm so tired of seeing this young man. She was like, he's off. Stop putting music videos out. <laughs> well, I, well, you know, I'm, I'm a rapper. Like, you know what I'm saying? Rap about butterflies and unicorns no, and, and something. That wasn't where I was at. So. <laughs> you don't, I feel like that's still not where you're at. Yeah, so my, it's okay. My mind wasn't there at that particular yeah, no. time, man. But but no, so that's that's how that happened. So I went stu- super broke. Um, I mean, I fell off. And then, you know... <laughs> My homie uh, gave me a couch. Dave gave me a couch, so I slept on that for a little bit. Mm-hmm. But I literally, like most of the time, I like half the time I didn't have power. Like I was waiting to, or to get them vouchers from uh, then, like a little community action program in Lincoln. I would get a voucher to get my power turned on. Oh my gosh! So imagine that, like being yeah. a man, yeah, gold teeth. You know, you lose you lose your brother to the streets, right? He gets killed. You you you're back in Illinois. You feel like you're a loser. You mm-hmm. fell off, right? You. You ain't the man no more. Right. But that was a perfect time for me to start to build myself internally and start to learn, you know, who I am as a man. And um, so that's what I ended up doing. I started going to the gym. Started working, oh, okay. Start working out. But that, I was, and that, that alone, that is mental. It's physical. It's discipline. Mm-hmm. It's consistency. I've heard a lot. In fact, the girl that left all the glitter on that chair, Kaylee. 
Yeah. She did the 75. Is that what it's called? I was, I'm, a, I'm 75 what? hard. Yeah. Yeah, 75 hard. Priscilla. Yeah, that's she what. She said that changed her life. I'm, so that's what I was doing. I just failed uh, at like day 40 something just the other day. So I got to start all over again. Okay. Because of getting on the plane. Well, I've heard it's real hard. So, we, you know, can't be too hard on you. Yeah. Yeah. I, I got to do better. So that changed your life. Interesting. So you're like the second person on my podcast to Dude. say, Andy Frisella needs to hear all this. Yeah, the fitness hard. changed yeah. everything. People respected me more. Um, coming into the store, I was making friends. I, I, I had other things to talk about. I was creating conversations about fitness and health and goals because yeah. everybody that's in the gym has a goal. So now I'm speaking about goals and, and moving forward instead of the past and the street shit I did yep. and keeping it real. and Looking forward gun. instead of back. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's when I, my mind started to change. And so did my circles because I noticed that, you know, now I'm not even, I don't be, I'm not around people who are, uh, pr- projecting and entertaining and dancing with my past shadows mm-hmm. like now I'm creating new bonds and relationships with people that are creating uh, muscle mentally and physically in life right so it was crazy man and and uh, I was working out how old I, were you this time I don't know man you asked me too many questions I like I know I like to get a timeline I'm like okay you felt like 18 is when you 20 was that 20 f- baby and then I mean 26 you ask know. me too many questions <laughs> Welcome 27? to my interview. I mean, too many number. I ain't a math guy. I'm like not smart. Twenty. Okay, Six. so how old are you now? Thirty-six. Okay, I'm so, just trying to get. Gra- so uh, maybe like how long 20, it took you to kind of twenty. Uh, Twenty-six. Okay. It was like twenty-six. Okay. 20, so the last 20. ten years has been twenty-six, like all up, twenty-five, just twenty-six. Building yourself up. So check it out, though. Okay. This is get get okay. crazy, check right? It out. I'm AT and T. I'm the phone man. Everybody love me in town. <laughs> I went so, from the suit man, the shoe man, to the phone man. You know what I'm saying? The phone man. Boom, yeah. boom, slinging the phone, getting it on. <laughs> and then I had this guy come in. He's like, "Man, you're too talented to be here." And I'm still rapping, doing shows. Like I'm killing yeah. shows at this time too. Like locally in Peoria, Illinois, and all these other. I'm doing little local shows. I'm, yeah. I'm smacking it up. And this guy kept coming. He's like, he's like, bro, you shouldn't be working for nobody else. You need to work for yourself. You're too talented. Everything about you's dope. The way you talk, walk, blah, blah, blah. I'm like whatever, dude. He came in and asked me again, and I'm like, I, I kind of hate this job. I ain't going to lie. No, no shot to AT&T, but it was just a stressful job. Yeah. Um, I loved helping people, but it was just, you know, the pay wasn't there. And I was like, man, well, I don't got nothing to lose. And they had just promoted me, by the way. Okay. I just got promoted to assistant uh, manager. And then I was, you know, they getting ready to give me another position, another uh, store to run or whatever. And I said. Yeah, they're not going to let you go. They're not going to let a good worker go. They're like, promote him quick so he doesn't leave. So I left. They called me for a month straight to come back. Come back. But guess what I went to go do? What did you go do? I want to know with this guy. Just to be a personal trainer. Oh, interesting. I had okay. no schedule, no nothing. He's this like, guy own a gym? Yeah, he okay. owned a gym. And he's like, yeah, you be a personal trainer and manage the gym. Man, I didn't realize, you know, like, you know, working for yourself was like all this freedom. But then right. I ended up working even more because I loved it, right? I was yeah. working like 12 hours a day. I never even took a day off. Like, I would like try to work every freaking day. That's cool. Like, and the I, gym is a family. It's not the same. Like, if you work at a gym usually and you love it, yeah. you love the, like you love the people. You make friends with your coworkers and the people that come in. And they always expect to see you there. No, man. Yeah. So, jo- so Josh, his name was Josh Schleider, man. Shout out to Josh, man. He believed in me, man, to, 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 to uh, run the gym, man. You know, I, I, I was killing it. And his heart was kind of like getting away from it. He wanted to leave the town. Mm-hmm. And so he was like, I'm going to sell the gym. And I said, I'm going to buy the gym, right? Oh. I didn't know how I was going to do it. <laughs> I don't know how, but I'm buying it. I'm speaking it into existence, right? That's right. So I was like, I'm going to buy the gym. So um, I got the training like a mother humper. I sold all my shoes. And then I had, I had this uh, client of mine, man. Um, she probably don't want to be like, Name, name drop, but her and her husband, um, um, great family in, in, um, in the county. And uh, they're, you know, I, I told them what I was trying to do. And then they, she taught me how to build my credit up. I didn't know how to build my credit, really. Mm-hmm. So she taught me how to build my credit, and told me what to do. And, um, and then she wrote me a check for personal training for the entire year. Oh, so, 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 that, so that was my down payment yeah. to get the dango along. That's so cool. Because you know what I love about that? It wasn't a handout. It was like, a, hey, I'm going to use you anyway. Here's your money in advance to like further your dream. Right? Yeah. I mean, that's what she was doing yep. intentionally. Well, and then I ended up buying her a uh, Louis Vuitton purse when, uh, as a payback, too. Oh, here, I'll write you a check then. <laughs> right now. Yeah. <laughs> um, I bought her a Louis purse, and she was almost in tears. And oh, I, her so husband cool. called me. I thought he was like, he's, oh, he's about to snap on me. Stop buying my wife's Louis. Like, Get away from my wife. No, no. He was like, man, thank you so much, man. She, you know, I wanted to buy her that, and I want her to buy it, but she won't spend the money on it. Because even though they're they're well off, they're super conservative. Yeah. So that's how I kind of learned 
I try to learn to be more conservative, but sometimes I'm a rapper. So, yeah. but, um, so yeah, they helped me buy the gym. And so I bought the gym. I ended up, I ended up expanding it, doubling the size and doubling the memberships. So cool. And so then, you know, and I now own it, I own it this t- till today. That's the Anytime Fitness. Yeah. But I okay. own it and I own a few other things too. So, That's yeah. so cool. Yeah. Okay. Well, you kind of said a trigger word there, which is conservative. So you ready to Let's talk, talk about talk. your political beliefs? Let's talk about it. All right. We've got a, a rapper, CEO, athlete. What do you think about this current uh, state of our country? Man, you know we, we're missing we're missing a lot right now, man. We're we're missing the accountability right now. Mm. You can't hold anybody accountable for shit right now, man. That's right. We, we 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 just we we diagnose everything and give everything a pill and a and a hug, and we don't we don't fight the we don't fight the problem. Yeah. We, what in what context do you mean like the problem? We don't we don't take it head on like whatever it is we blame something else and then we give it we give drugs to it or we give mm-hmm. some some stupid title to it and and that's it nothing gets done you know and yeah that's and you know one thing I teach my son is how to be accountable and my daughter too accountable and responsible for every action and everything you do so even though I got in trouble and even though I know the system's flawed I know. I know those systems are not designed for me to be successful, but I need to know. I know that, and it's my responsibility to take action to not get involved in that type of shit. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm accountable for my life. Yeah. Well, and you and you paid you paid the price for your actions. P- paid you the served price. your time. You did your probation. Maybe not 100, percent but right. <laughs> not maybe the way they would have wanted. But man, paid your dues, tripping, and then you that, see. This is what I don't like is is. Um, a society that tells people that because you went to jail or because of your skin color or because of your community or the way you were raised or the trouble you got into, you can never be anything other than like that. Yeah. And you went out and you became a capitalist. Yes. You went out and you earned and, and, and respectfully recreated who you are into success. Nobody handed it to you. You didn't abuse the system. Maybe that one Nordstrom application, that's about it. Like everything you've gotten. Hmm. <laughs> you went and got so i you know we're not even remotely prepared to talk about this but what do you say to a society that says like because you're a black man you're oppressed in america that i'm oppressed um you know listen i know i know systems i understand that things are not going to be in my favor but ain't nothing going to oppress me there's nothing in this world that's about to oppress me as a man. I'm going to tell you that now. And uh, I'm going to stand for that. You, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I'm not a victim. I will never be a victim. I've always been a victor. Um, even when the rules aren't fair. Even when the rules are even. Um, there's no such thing as even. There's no such thing, such thing as fair. Like, people are right. born in different situations. Yeah. Uh, in different institutions. So, we, we got to understand that, man. So, I don't, I ain't never been, I've never been oppressed in my life. Um, unless I allow somebody to oppress me. Even if I'm, even if it is unfair, I'm not going to abide by those rules. I'm not going to let it beat me. I like that you said that the man concept because the first person I think of is Colin Kaepernick, and he drives me nuts with his like videos about how he's still being treated like a slave, even though he's yeah. in the NFL. And I'm like, you know what? Point you make all alone is like it's the men doing this, and you, men should be strong and resilient and overcoming because that's how God made them, and. We've got Colin Kaepernick, who has every opportunity in the world and has already enjoyed every opportunity in the world. And it's like, above all else, dude, be a man. Quit acting like such a sissy lala, like everything's against you. You're a dude. You're a man. Man up and overcome whatever it is you're alleging is out there that's oppressed you. Yeah. And like, I've never even considered the fact that you said, like, I'm a man. I'm a man. I can't, I'm a grown out, grown ass man. I can do it myself. Yeah. Like for me, like, you know, if if. I, have I been profiled because of my color? Have I been? Man, hell yeah, all the time. Um, I mean, I live in central Illinois, man, and I mean, it's not the most, you know, known for the most racially accepted area. <laughs> you know, I was, it's not that diverse. And I don't blame the people who do what they do. It's, it's just been taught, right. you know. And so at the end of the day, it's my job to educate them and show them, like, yo, that's not how it is. Right. And one of my... One of my best friends, man, his name is Dave McAllister, man. Um, he's an old white biker with a long-ass beard. Oh, awesome. He's got a Confederate flag tattoo. He says it's the Battle of Gettysburg, whatever the hell he says. Whatever, I don't care. What you, <laughs> I don't care what you call it. It's a damn Confederate flag, Dave. And I know you're going to see this and talk shit. I don't care. <laughs> but guess what? There's nothing I can't ask him for. That's right. 
I call him right now. He'll be on a plane out here. Mm-hmm. Cause that's that's my bro. Yep. Um, so all these uh, titles and and um, symbols, that symbols they try and to use. shit. Yeah. They try to keep the people separated, man. Yep. We got We got to get past this shit, man. It's, yep. it's, it's you know, it's, it's honestly. Um, when you're in poverty mentally, you know, you're going to be in poverty financially. Right. And, and so it's easy to confuse and cause disruption when you, when you don't have, uh, you know, the mental, you know, money, bank account and the physical right. bank account to, to function and focus on other things in life. Right. So now you're not, you're not in flight and fight mode no more. Right. You know I, what I mean? Yeah. I, um, I noticed a huge change. So I moved from Oregon <clears throat> and I'm not even sure if you're aware of this, but I actually left Oregon because I was being attacked by Antifa and BLM and being labeled a white nationalist and a white supremacist yeah. because I didn't want BLM riot, rioters to burn down my salon, which they said they were going to do. So I got cancel culture, got labeled a racist. And, and in Oregon, there isn't much diversity. I will say that. Like my best friend of 15 years was a black girl. And if I had to think about how many other black people I knew in Oregon, there wasn't very many. There was not a single one even at my high school. Um, mind you, it's a small school. I moved to Arizona. I start going to the gym out here and I'm kind of on just like this weird mental journey of like being alert about diversity because it's like landed at my doorstep accidentally and looking around and going, there's a lot of Hispanics. There's a lot of black people. Like there's not a lot of diversity at all in Oregon, which is where they're screaming that like, we accept all diversities and we are like the almighty speaking of diversity. And I'm going, you guys actually don't know anything about it, and yet it's all you preach about. And now here I'm in a state, and there's so much diversity, I'm actually acutely aware of it and love it, and and it's surrounding these people, right? And yet we're not talking about it because it's actually part of our life. It, yeah. it isn't a situation where I have to acknowledge if there's a black person in the room or a, a Mexican in the room or whatever it is because – they're actually all here and we're all just living nicely. But in Oregon, they act like they've got the authority on it, but they actually don't sur- even surround themselves with it. This is, it's easier to sell, too. It right? is easy to sell. You make more money off us feuding. Um, yep. You know, having races against each other, right? Yeah. You got more money coming into penal systems. So, you know, you, now you got a lot of, you know, mo- most of the minority men, you know, probably have children, right? So you got fatherless kids being brought up. So mm-hmm. it's, a, it's, a, it's, a money, it's a money grab for me. You know, I just see that if the people, we can get past uh, a lot of the political shit, honestly, and, and get more to the people yeah. and, and more just being about, you know, right and wrong and just yeah. being accountable for your shit, I think it'd be a lot easier. We don't need the titles, man. Um, you know, we all live in this country. Um, you know, for the most part, you know, you could be safe here. Right. Um, you, you have the choice to, to make the move how you need to move. I've, I've watched YouTube videos of um, other countries and how these kids suffer, man. Um, and I'm like, yo, th- we're so blessed. We've got it so um, good here. I, I watch kids and like in Honduras. I was looking at some of those like living conditions. These people got houses made out of 10 and the kids are playing in the mud, finding mm-hmm. fish for food. And they're happy. Yeah. They don't got this, all the phones and the iPhone yep. 29, all that shit. They don't got none of that. Yep. So we're so, I, we're bored. We're so privileged. We're so bored. Mm-hmm. We're looking at we're people. We're creating. We're canceling people. How the fuck are you going to cancel somebody? How do you cancel a person? This is a human being. You said they canceled yeah. for saying something you didn't like. You want to ruin their lives because that's really what cancel culture you is. Can't be canceling people. Yeah. These are human beings, y'all canceling. Yep. Everybody has an opinion. Nobody, nobody's perfect. But stop fucking canceling people. This shit is so weak. Yep. How you feel if you got canceled? You know what I'm saying? Like somebody just canceled you. Just yeah, you know, it's stupid, man. Yep. Like I, I, we got to get back to humanity, man. We got to stop with all these acronyms, all this shit, man, and just start loving people. I totally agree. Um, a lot of people will say, and I even say, like, okay, I'm a little political on the podcast, but. I feel like that's not even true it kind of sums up the things that i talk about but it's because it's like policies humanity and social issues that have sort of weaseled their way into politics right but what it comes down to is like the the people behind all of that if if people just said to themselves all right you know i don't like what lindsey graham said about you know xyz let's let's ruin her 15-year career let's torment her let's send death threats let's burn down her salon it's like whoa what happened to being being treated the way you want to be treated? I mean, that's what you you guys are preaching, right? Is like, if I'm, quote, a racist, then I'm a bad person. So in your reaction to me being what you think is a bad person, you're going to be an even worse person. 
and ruin my life. And that's what cancel culture is. And, and now it's starting to go both ways. And yep. it really is like kind of to the point where I, I've even had to check myself. Like, I don't want to ruin the lives of people that have hurt me. I just want everyone to kind of understand what happens when you get to that extreme point. What happened with just like talking shit and receiving shit like and getting it back, right? Right. Like back in the day, we can just you can throw a jab, you throw a jab. And um, it's cool. Like, you know what? With are just words and you know, but we, we just we exchanging we exchanging different energies and stuff. Yeah. Everybody's so important now, like you can't offend nobody. Right. You're not you're not you're taking yourself too way too fucking serious. Like smile. Like I seriously, it's just everybody's over important. They're looking for you to mess up and there's certain people that are in the public light and that's what happens that sucks to be a public figure, right? Because if you they look and if you do something that looks like you all right, cancel you. Yeah. Right. Like like Man, they might cancel me for being on the show. You know, I don't know. I don't they give, might. I don't give a shit. Like, that's what, I got death threats from my own family because I wouldn't give them money, you know, like before. So I don't like, like I'm a real, I'm a real motherfucker, man. You know, I take care of my my kids. I'm, I'm who I am. Yeah. You know, but I'm not, I'm not a, I'm not the smartest man. I'm not the dumbest man. But I know how to provide, and I know that I love people, and I love helping people, man. And I have a genuine knack for bringing people together. And why can't you just be that person without everyone in the world thinking that they get an opinion about what you are or what you say? Like, I get haters on my Instagram every <laughs> single day. And you know what I do? I go, I reply to them, totally. And then I move on, right? I yeah. don't need to blast you. I don't need to screen. Sometimes I do because they're really crazy. But yeah. I don't need to screenshot it. I don't need to reply. I don't need to justify myself to you. I'm just going to move on. And I disagree with what you're saying about me. <laughs> and I don't appreciate the hate. Why is it literally not the other way around where like you don't like what I have to say? Move on then. Move on. It's like like people choose to view stuff, right? Like you can you don't have to watch this show. If you don't like what she's doing or you don't like her, just don't watch her. Right. Don't even look at her. But you looking for something to complain about, then, you know, it causes, you know, what it says a lot about yourself, honestly. Like, if I don't like some shit, I'm not going to go to it. I'm not going to participate in right. it. Right. I'm not going to subscribe to you so I can leave no. you hate messages every I don't, day. I don't, have, I don't even have enough energy in, in, the, in the time of the day to be con- concerned with somebody that I don't agree with or like, right? Yeah. I'm not going to go into my YouTube channel that I really don't like at all and go in there and, and talk crap about them. I don't have time. And I don't care because I don't like them. Yeah. I'm not going like, don't, don't go to go somebody's house. Life. I'm not going to go to somebody's house I don't like. And, and tell them I don't like how your furniture is and talk shit. I'm not going to their house. Right. Thank you. And I don't that, want, your house is dirty to me. Your it, house is dusty. This all started with the, uh, your house is dusty. This all started with the social media. Like the, the idea that behind a screen, anybody can say and be and do whatever they want. And they don't feel, here's the word again, accountable. No. They don't feel accountable because there isn't a, a can't emotion, punch you no more. Yep. Or a sensitivity or like a look me in the eyes. You can't beat them up no more. Yep. As I say, you got these nerds scamming people online and stuff, like taking their money. They got all these dudes telling these hateful stuff, telling people to kill themselves and yep. all this super mean stuff. And man, you, you're so tough because you, you, you're on a computer, man. Like you got tech, you can hide behind. Can hurt you back. Nobody can reach you. Yep. But like back in the day when I was on a bus stop or something, and you know, I had my Kool Aid mustache. <laughs> and you know what I'm saying? And somebody, I had beef, man. We've been a fight. You got it. Yeah. Well, we, tomorrow, you know, all right, we ain't got no phone. I know we broke. You know, I ain't got no phone. They used to say this. Uh, my name is Mario, and I'm proud to say AT and T took my phone away. Oh, they used to make <laughs> fun of me. <laughs> Yo, oh, but no, awesome. but no, but you know what I'm saying? You, you couldn't. You had to deal with. You had to deal with it. Yeah. Well, no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, and and also like having been canceled, the things that were said to me via the internet are so vile. I, I can barely even remember them. It was like a, a, it's a flash in my life. But nobody has ever walked up to me said and it. said those things, ever. And I was right there, window front in downtown Salem. They would flip me off through the windows, you know, they'd make faces, they'd write things on pizza boards. Yeah. But I'm like, say it to my face. And they couldn't because they know that in real life, it's not kind to talk to someone like that. And you wouldn't really. Yeah. And I also might punch you, and I also have a love of my Second Amendment rights. So they knew better, right? Yeah. But that screen has just given everyone the authority to treat other humans so horribly and so impassionately and insensitively, and it, it takes away all accountability. So, like, I know this is not as extreme, but I used to, we did the thing, like, you know how they read the mean comments? 
I'm like on Twitter. Oh yeah, I love that. So I did that, you know, oh. about one of my videos and stuff. Yeah. And you know, I I was like laughing at the haters like making fun of me, but this is you know this is a lot different because you know this is people like threatening you, right? right. But I can laugh about it now. Though. Yeah. Now I'm like, oh. Pfft, yeah. yeah. Well, so yeah. So I would read. We would read them and you know release the video of us reading the comments and like, dang man. I can't you know, do that. I had some good ones. It was so. I man, I got made fun of so much. I had some funny, some funny. What in ones. the world do people make fun of you about? I mean, like, you're a pretty cool dude. You're good oh, looking. Man, and no. you're, now you're ripped. Like, you're oh. now you're famous. No, what? so before before I had fixed my teeth and stuff, I had a, you know gap teeth and stuff. Oh. So like sometimes they would like roast my teeth, tell me I look like I've been chewing on bricks. Oh my uh, god! One said I look like Lord Voldemort. Uh, Who? Some dude off Harry Potter. Oh my gosh! Okay, I don't know. Uh, what else? That's how you know it's a real nerd. You're, yeah. you're trying to make fun of me and call me a Harry Potter character. Yeah, I don't, yeah, they was yeah. that From was your kinda, mama's basement. That was kind of bogus for that. Yeah. Um, I don't know. All types of just making fun of me. Oh, that's like, too this funny. dude still raps. Like I can't believe he's still rapping. Or, oh my gosh. Uh, they, and like, what are you doing? That's what I want to know. All right, what what are you doing right now? I, I work for Baskin Robbins. Oh, okay, all right. I mean, hey, shout out to the Baskin Robbins employees, man. Hey, that's right. I'm not hooking... dagging on Baskin Robbins. Hey, Sorry. look, check it out though. What we don't care what they're doing. They typing about us. That's Sh- right. Shit, go ahead, free I, press, baby. That's right. I tell them now. I used to not tell them this, but then I figured it out. I go, they'll 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 go down. Someone will find me in the middle of the night, right, two a.m. Yeah. And the, and I'll see. I'll wake up. I'll see a hateful comment. And I'm oh, okay, whatever. And then I'll see twenty more. I'm like. Oh, you scrolled my page all night long and commented hateful stuff every page, right? I'm like, I'm sorry, you have nothing better to do. And at that point, I just think, oh man, that's got to be a rough life where you're scrolling my page just to like renewed hate me. I mean, but controversy sells, man. So you, oh, have, yeah, that's what I was gonna say. They, I'm like, you're boosting my algorithm. Yeah, you by have. Commenting I mean, page. this is you know, this is gonna bring. That's what comes with. Like with music, like you know, rappers, you know, they, if they got beef or whatever, sometimes they sell more. They sell more records, you know. Yeah. If there's some, yeah. you know, there's some drama with the law. Do there's, something to get in the news. There's murder around you, or you know, yeah. there's, um, it's, you sell more records. So it's same. This is the same thing in the political battlefield. You get people, uh, white and black, brown against each other. You know, it's yeah. it's crazy. Let's highlight all the bad stuff somebody says, or if they twisted a word, let's make it seem like they. And they could be racist or somebody could be racist but guess what they could people change man like that's that shit's just talk that shit yeah. just talk man it's just yeah. talk that's all it is i don't have a natural hate for freaking anybody a certain complexion right so i'm attracted to what i'm attracted to and that's what it is and it's all about who they are inside too yeah i mean you know that too i mean <laughs> okay, so right. picture this right you come on the patriot barbie podcast are you would you call yourself a conservative I'm, I feel like I'm very conservative, man, as far as my views and how I move. I think I am. Okay. Uh, I feel like I'm a conservative man. All right, so. I'm a classic man. So so you're kind of coming out of the closet as a conservative, basically, on this podcast, unless you've put it on your Instagram before. I mean, I, being conservative is it's not bad. That's a good thing. What everybody th- everybody should be conservative about what they do. What do, you th- what do you think about Trump? What do you think about Trump? There's no right or wrong answer here. Oh, man. I'm not going to go. Because listen, this is how it is. I'm not going to hate you if you don't like him. I'm going to keep it real, man. Okay. I'm going to keep me. it real, man. man Trump, Trump, is, uh, Trump is my guy, man. <laughs> I like Trump. <laughs> Trump. Trump, you know what? Trump might say some, some stuff that's wild on the internet, man. But Trump handles business, though. He, does, he gets business done. I don't judge him by his antics of what he, what he put, posts on Twitter because that's entertainment, man. That's all entertainment. Um, but far as like what he his how he moves and policies and, and money, I mean he, he he handles business very well, man. And and whether we like it or not, America is a, is a business. It's a business. That whole thing. Did you see me not reacting and not talking and interrupting interrupting you? Yeah. That was like the sound of it of all sound bits. And you got Trump right behind you. I don't know if you noticed that. No, I ain't noticed it. Ah, there's your boy. I, mean, I, got, I mean, I like Trump. I, I you know I never. Man, it, it was hard. You know, I lost friends because of that, man. I got yeah. I got people who will never speak to me again because um, I, I voted for Trump, man. And um, because I I seen past all the, the racial division, man. I seen past what they're trying to sell. Every time they try to sell something, I just, I'm always I'm leery of that because I've been in the system. You know what I mean? Yeah, you've been deceived. You know what dece- deception looks like too. So so now I'm, I'm thinking for myself as an individual. I'm not I'm not riding with the, with any groups. I feel like it does. It takes a weak person for the news to say, hey, this guy, even though he's never done or said anything racist ever, 
he's a racist and you're like oh okay yeah now everybody like oh he's like, racist it's a weak person that believes yeah. I mean it's like you know we gotta start to think for ourselves and, and, and really start to do our research and I'm not saying I did our research Trump and I just seen that he made money and I helped me out as a small business owner and cool I mean at the end of the day whoever's in the office I still gotta wake up every day and provide for my family mm -hmm. so I'm not if they're not they're not gonna directly do anything for me if I don't I don't know them personally I'm not even in that realm I'm not in those rooms you know whatever laws are passing it right. do I really have an effect on that I don't know we apparently we do with our vote you know and I'm, yeah. I'm starting to learn that it is things like this though like speaking out having the courage to speak out and speak the truth yeah. does really make a difference yeah, I'm not afraid man I'm, you're you have followers yeah. okay those people are listening yeah, they those, may not listen to anyone else but they may listen to you yeah and so you might make a difference and when you make a big impact like that you affect your life you affect your entrepreneurial life you affect your son's life yeah so I got close homies, man. I mean, I know, you know, people personally, they, they just hate Trump, man. And and um, and they can never give a good reason why. I, well, right? it's not even that, man. Like, I don't, you don't know him personally. Like, I know people who hate LeBron James. Right. They just hate him for no reason. And they don't personally actually know him, though. It's because of the sport and, you know, yeah. the, the emotion of, you know, see him, you know, act a certain way. You know, it's just, it's those people have these opinions based off, they don't have scholarship to even speak or hate. Mm -hmm. Hate it's easy to hate. It is easy. It's to an hate. easy cop out. Even as you say that, I'm like, ooh, I hate LeBron James. But it's I'm like, you know what? I it's guess a I cop don't, out. It's I easy. Don't hate him. I you guess. Don't know him. It's like self check here. I, I definitely don't love what he stands for. You don't know him. It makes me, maybe I should have him on and I'll grill the crap out of him. You, you gotta you gotta know him, man. Like I like what he does. You know, for his community, gives back. You know, whatever his I don't his political stance could be. Is is that really his political stance? Or, you know, we don't know. Right. You, you see what I'm saying? Is he selling something? Is that, he selling yeah. like? But as far as what he does as at home and as a man, he does, what he does on, uh, for PR, you know, they might be yelling at me like, you know, don't go in there and, and go on, on that show. But I'm my own boss, so I'm just gonna do what I want anyways. Yeah. And nobody gonna tell me how to speak or how I need to come because I might because because I got love for everybody. You know, I'm in the community really giving back. So when people saying they was marching, doing that's great. You know, I gave back and I and I put in work and I, I went through the neighborhood. I did what I was supposed to do. I'm mm -hmm. still gonna do that for the rest of my life as a father and as a black man you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. so that has no nothing to do with uh it doesn't have to be political right. um it, it, it's about humanity you yeah. know and that's trying to build back for, for the community for my community but i don't know man it's like i said i don't know if these guys really believe what they put out sometimes i don't know i'm and i'm not trying to speak for anybody i'm just right. saying it could be money i always think there's some type of business be, deal being done behind yeah. the shit Yep, or it's, some yeah, someone's incentivized them to speak out a certain way. Like, come on, man! Like, come on! These people don't. You think these people care about politics like that? Mm -mm. Like a lot of these people, they're too rich. They don't care. Right. They, I actually can't imagine why you would get so, uh, so put yourself in the center of it for the drama when you don't need it. When you're like, you've got money, you've got cars, you got a career. Like a lot of, I think a lot of celebrities don't care. I think I'm not trying to speak for everybody. I think I think. Like you get to a level, man, where you have so much going on. You got so much good going on, man. Like, you know, you could be jaded easily, like, because you're in the elite groups, man. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, the everyday people, we we down here. Yeah. So we we got to deal with each other. Yep. We can't get in the private jet. No matter how rich you get, just remember that. You oh, know. <laughs> when, when I'm sitting next to you in your private jet, and we're going somewhere. <laughs> yeah, but you know, we can't escape like that. Yeah, we got it. We got family members that need us right now. Yeah, we right here in the fire. Yeah, and so I'm a I'm a fight the good fight for good. All, for all for all people. I'm with you. Thank you for all people, man. All right. Um. So your Instagram is this is Canon one N by the way, guys. Yeah. Uh. Website is uh first farm dot. Uh, I just I just said I didn't have a website, so I just said hey, just go to firstform dot com and get some supplements. Uh, forward slash Mario Cannon. You know, Icon Meals, too. I was watching your reel on Icon, I, Icon Meals. Icon Meals is fine. Delicious. So good, man. I asked him, I go, are you guys conservative? Because I want him to rep me. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm such a, like, a patriotic conservative figure. It's like, yeah. You got to be ready. Gotta, it comes with the heat, huh? You got to represent Patriot Barbie. But guess what, man? That's, that's your thing. That's cool. I, that's that's right. awesome. That's yeah. you. Don't ever change, man. Unapologetically. Don't, don't ever change. All right. Ever. Thank you. I ain't changing. You ready for your cheers? Yeah. Okay. What's your cheers? Cheers to... Cheers to everyone out there that's, that's overcame something, man, that, that, that held them back, that put them in a dark place, and they was able to pull themselves out and then make any excuses. But cheers for all those people 
that pulled themselves out of depression and that dark place and they fought and they they here today so cheers to them oh that was a good one man some of my people come up with like oh cheers to fighting the good fight i'm like come on something deep that was deep thank you yeah man that because right now the mental health game is like people are using it wrong Mm -hmm. there's people out there really needing that man they really they really hurting and um you know my family my family need it you know my family be hurting so you know we suffered a lot so i think about them a lot all right such an awesome guest thank you so much for coming <laughs> on man this is awesome yeah thanks for having me uh, yeah, yeah this, this was lit this is crazy and then, honestly this is one of the most like one of the more intriguing like it was challenging because you know in the back of my mind i'm like do i need to filter i'm like nope nope I, i'm gonna come through and, and spit it that's right that's i'm spitting I, it man. that's all i ask yeah love it all right thank you thank you Thanks for tuning in to the Patriot Barbie podcast. Follow me on Truth Social at the Patriot Barbie and Instagram at the.patriot.barbie. Subscribe, leave a review, and share this podcast with your friends. You can find this show, my book Targeted, and my apparel line on www.patriotbarbie.com. God bless America and God bless you. It's Dylan's KC Barbecue at Four Valley locations. Our sports bar in Arrowhead is packed with TVs for the ultimate sports fan. Our Wildlife World Zoo location will have you on the edge of your seat, dining right next to our 60,000 gallon shark tank. Dylan's Bayou at Pleasant Harbor has never ending sunsets, beautiful people, and live music every weekend. And our newest location, Western Trails Ranch, is 12 acres of rodeo fun and live outdoor concerts for the entire family. It's Dylan's KC Barbecue, where we're elite, unique, and memorable.